Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here from the Knife Center, coming at you from Blade Show. We're at the Blade Runner Systems booth with my friend Lawrence. How are you, sir? Good. Good seeing you again. Good to see you as well. We got some new BRS stuff to talk about and some new Revo stuff to talk about today as well. Uh, so, Lawrence, take it away. I'll first, start with the first uh, one's this, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. First one's this. This is a uh, 4x scale of uh, of the replicant built by our good friend Gus Lammers, who manages a lot of the exhibition setup. Uh, we are actually raffling it off and it supports uh, knife rights, so if you're interested, come visit our booth. Great cause. Yep. And that's like CPM hard rock maple, right? Yeah, it actually <laughs> yeah, it actually has three different kinds of wood and it's like almost a perfect replica of, uh, of a replicant. I so tried it out cool. here in the, in the yeah. aisle. It, it does actually work. Yeah. It's kind of scary, but it works. <laughs> But for real, what's uh, what's the first new? We'll start with today? the uh, butterfly knives. I'm sure Excellent. everybody wants to hear. This was a, a really big year for us. We have a lot of new prototypes and things that we're hoping to introduce before the end of this year. Sure. So we'll just start uh, left to right. Uh, this is the channel aluminum bare bones. It is a one solid piece 7075 aluminum handle with shouldered Zen pins. Sure. It runs on uh, bushings actually. Mm -hmm. So the tuning is going to feel very much like the Alpha Beast and the Replicant. So if you're familiar with flipping a BRS product, that's that's kind of where we spend a lot of our, our time and energy is the tuning to make sure right. it performs right. right. We've managed to put bushings in this product so it has that same exact feel. The blade, this is a live version. It's also going to have a trainer version, mm -hmm. which is going to look just like this blade over here. And it's still made out of 154 CM steel, so same steel. And it's latchless for now. We may make a latch version in the future, but right now a lot of people are leaning towards a, a latchless yeah, configuration like so we're going to open yeah. with, with that it also cool. it's it just the balance is, is really really yeah. good on it, it does it feels really nice and pardon my my very amateurish flipping here but feels really good i like the stone washing on there is it going to be a, a few different colors yeah just... we're we're actually going to do some anodized versions we may do an all blacked out version the cool thing about aluminum is you, you can do, do it in so many kinds. different ways yeah. we might do yeah. it like a splatter anno it's going to be a really fun project. Yeah. Very and so cool. far, the feedback's been really excellent on it. Yeah, it feels great. The smoothness is excellent. And the great thing about this is we're going to start with this uh, bayonet style blade, kind of like the original bare bones. Sure. And this channel design still allows us to have this blade design where the tip doesn't have to be in the center. So you can do cool stuff like this. Yeah. So you might see Tontos in the future. You might see Weehawks in the future. Very cool. Really, really fun project. Very nice. Very nice. Moving along, another variation of the bare bones. We did this one out of titanium. Mm -hmm. Some people, when we first made the bare bones, people flipped it and they said, man, this would be really cool if it was out of titanium. We actually made the steel version because people were like, what if you made a more economical the price point? Right. The, the price point. Right. But when they when they flipped it, they, they thought, well, you know what? This actually would make a great titanium knife. So yeah. we prototyped it in a trainer and a live blade. The live titanium actually has a, the Tonto that's in the steel version of the bare bones sure. right now. Sure. So it will be made like that. And we're out actually going to, I think the prototype doesn't have the bushing, but when we do the titanium it one, it will yeah. have the yeah. actual bushing. And again, it will come in the trainer and the and live, live option, uh, nice. option. That'll be cool. and we can also anodize it have a lot of fun with it as yeah. well yeah well when the platform's as solid as this is just switching to titanium exactly is just gonna you, could, it up you could do a, a ton of different things yeah. with it have a lot of fun with the project give it a lot of different looks and keep the same performance level as Very everything nice. else in the brs lineup absolutely now this i think uh we've been asked for this product ever since the replicant came out Everyone has wanted the replicant trainer. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you, if when we go to our website and we look at the top search thing, it's for a it's product that doesn't exist. It's the replicant yeah. trainer, right? That's it's like when the, you look at that and go, that might be a clue. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah, the yeah. top three. Sometimes it's the number one, and sometimes it's in the top three. But there, people are searching for it. Right. And every time we have we go to Blade Show, uh, they're like, do you have a, a replicant trainer? Is, is are you guys ever going to make a replicant trainer? So. These are two prototype replicant trainers. One thing that I 
if you notice that we do with our trainers is a lot of trainers just have holes punched through to, to lighten the blade. Right. What we do is we try to keep the, we give it like a, a look that honors the original blade. That's why we went with this style. It kind of mimics the grind lines of the original Scorpion Tip Tonto right. of, the, of the live blade replicant. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also serves the function of taking out the weight where it would be taken out on the actual on the, on the actual grind. So it's not just that the thing that the weight is the same, the, the actual balance, balance all the way through exactly is the, is same. the same. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's still gonna use 154 CM heat treated steel, still gonna run on bushings. We make a trainer that is pretty much exactly as close as we can get to the live version. Right. We don't cut any corners. Right. There's no like painted parts or anything like that. It's just through and through a replicant that's just not sharp. That there you, you can go. that yeah. you can flip safely. Uh, yeah, very nice. Well, I like the uh, red and black G10. Oh, here, that is, yeah, nice. that is great. They're not real good. That is a really, really good looking color. And even sure. though it's, it's just a skinny handle, you're still getting the layers showing. So oh, that's yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. So moving along, I would say after the replicant trainer, we always get asked for the Alpha Beast trainer. So this year, we finally were able to prototype an Alpha Beast trainer. It also has the cutout that pays uh, uh, you know, honors the Basically, original yeah. mm -hmm. design of the first released Alpha Beast. And again, weight is cut out where it needs to be to simulate the weight of the, of yeah. the live blade. Yeah. Still going to be titanium handles, run on bushings, 154 CM heat treated steel. Same latch system, everything. And that's so, when again, when you transition from that to a live Alpha Beast, it should feel exactly just about identical. Same, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and just the, the solidity of this. Yes. Even more so than these guys. Like, you, you feel it from that first flip, man. It's just... It still has that Alpha Beast, like you said, the, that presence. Yeah. The weight yeah. and the, the kind of aggressive angles. Like, nothing is lost, even though it's a, a trainer. Even just because it's not sharp. Yeah. Doesn't mean it can't be still even, awesome. Even yeah. the trainer has, like, the, the crown, crown spine, spine and everything, yep. right? It's, it's really much to a T. Yeah. If you were to be blindfolded, provided that you don't cut yourself, right. it should feel the exact same. Don't, don't, yeah, don't yeah. hand up the blade. Yeah. <laughs> it's a liability issue waiting to happen. <laughs> no, very nice, very nice. And when are, uh, are these guys kind of expected to release at this point? Do you guys know, Every, have, have an idea yet? Yeah, our goal is to have um, these knives available by the holidays this year. It's a bit of an ambitious goal but we've been doing pretty good with production and we're already, you know, as we, we prototyped it, the prototyping went really well, and that's usually a good indication that we can get it off the ground Excellent. Uh, pretty soon. Excellent. Uh, one thing that's kind of, we've had a very limited drop and technically it is already, al already released, but still a new product is the hybrid replicant. So it's the replicant, but with the titanium scale. Mm -hmm. We've been able to have a lot of fun with the color variations because yeah. you can anodize the top and the bottom and finish them in, in different uh, finishes. Like this one, for instance, has the satin and then the kind of the, the stone wash, stone wash yeah. bottom mm -hmm. or uh, scale. This, this one was the original prototype in 2019. We've since thinned it down a little bit to keep, to keep the weight uh, a little bit lighter gotcha. and a little bit more comfortable to flip. So these are actually currently in production. So these you'll definitely see this year. Fantastic. And I saved this one for last to transition into Revo. So as you know, our stuff is constantly in demand and we just can't keep up with it. So this was a Blade Runner system BRS design knife that now falls under the Revo banner Revo is going to start manufacturing domestically, hopefully again by the, the end of this year. So this Very will cool. actually be manufactured by Revo here in the United States. That's so awesome to hear. And this is a, um, we're probably gonna go with like a D2 steel. I think this one's 154 CM, mm -hmm. but we'll probably go with like a D2 steel, like a high quality steel. Sure. These, the hardware here, these are slotted for the prototype, but it'll probably be a T10. Uh, Torx. Okay. It's the same hardware front and back, and these are like a 
These are steel and they're kind of like cut like a D, so it serves as a latch gate as well. It has hidden Zen pins. So there's actually Zen pins in here, but you can't see them from the mm -hmm. top and bottom. It runs on bearings and these are 7075 aluminum handles. This knife was actually modeled after the replicant in terms of the dimensions and the thickness sure. and the curves, but you can also see some of the Alpha Beast uh, yeah. influence as well. Yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. And it weighs in at 4.7 ounces, which is a nice, yeah. nice balance for, for flipping. And the best part is we're targeting a sub $200 price point. We're hoping to get it around the $170, $180 range. So it's something that people can get into who are starting out, but it's gonna perform like a BRS product. It's gonna be quality like a BRS product, and it really has the look and presence of a, of a, of a BRS yeah. And, yeah. and Revo design product. Very nice, right? very nice. Do you think they're uh, gonna be, gonna be doing some other US made folders as well as the Bally's or start, our, I'm assuming just starting this with the This is gonna anyway. probably be the first project we, we start with, but our ambition, yes, is definitely to do domestic folders That'd and other awesome. domestic projects. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, but speaking of some folders, I have some new new variants of one of my favorite knives you guys yes, make. Yes, uh, Ness has been one of our best sellers. So we decided that for this year to introduce some other colors. Number one color that we've been requested for is the Hunter Orange. Really? Yes. Okay, interesting. So we're gonna do this in the orange scale. Uh, most likely, uh, this the prototypes are a black coat, but we're gonna do a, a dark wash. So black it wears wash. a little, yeah, yeah. black stone wash. Yeah, that'll so it, look great. It, it wears a little bit better. Against that orange too, that exactly. look, always looks fantastic. It's gonna, it, it still features the deep uh, carry pocket clip still will run on bearings yep. and we're probably going to match like if we if it has a dark blade the hardware will also match and be dark Fantastic. Uh, we're going to introduce a mark micarta handle it has a really nice kind of touch to it a nice organic feel yeah. to it yeah you get a little more warmth from that yeah it has the anodized uh spacers to kind of match the look of it yeah. this one will probably just be a stone wash blade it's got that copper vibe yeah too. yeah Kind of got that coppery um, vibe. A, a regular stone wash, not a black stone wash. Yeah, we we yeah. decided in the end, like just for the sake of expediency, we did them all in in black. Sure, sure. But after looking at them, we figured some of them were probably going to look better stone wash. More suited to the other. Finish, and what we'll yeah. do is, if we stone wash the blade, the hardware, the liners will also kind of match that yeah. as well. And this one here is going to be a limited edition, all copper scale nest. It's got a lot of weight to it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Two big slabs. It's of just copper, a nice, yeah. fun project we decided to do. Again, most likely a stone wash. We'll, we'll do for that one yeah. as well. I but, like the stone washing on the copper. Also, yeah. it has such a nice vibe to it. And it just has like the camera obviously can't capture it, but when you hold it, you can feel the significance of there's some weight of to the it, weight. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see how much darker this is by the end of the show. I know. I know. <laughs> I like that. I and like the knife a lot. This project here has been a, a really fun one. So we're trying to develop a multi-tool that is not so multi-tool-ish. Right. So usually if you have, say, your traditional Swiss Army knife or your Leatherman, uh, it'll have a knife function, but obviously the form factor is usually a square or an oval. It's not, doesn't a really have the knife ergo ergonomics. Yeah. Yeah. So our goal behind what we're calling the duo is to introduce a multi-tool that offers some more functionality but still keeps the form factor of of a knife. Of a of just a, yeah. a good old flip Like if you knife. didn't yeah. have the multi-tool in it, it would look like a regular knife. Yeah. And it feels yeah. like a regular knife, but it has the functionality of, of a multi-tool. That extra tool on there. For the sure. extra tool opens with a uh, nail nick and then it it locks with the liner that is unlocked through the through the back. Yeah, yeah. The final production will have three different blade shapes, a Tonto, a traditional clip point, and a sheep's foot. And this will be the, for now, the only uh, the, auxiliary the tool. The, uh, yeah, there, it's like yeah. a flathead and a, like a seatbelt type auxiliary yeah, cutter. Yeah. It has uh, steel liners, G10 handles, and an aluminum backspacer and a deep carry 
pocket clip. The blue is a nice touch too, just kind of spices things yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. 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 Very nice. And these are also due by the end of this year. Very cool. You guys have a target price point for these right now? Yeah, our target price point is going to be in like the sixty to seventy dollar range, so very competitive. Okay. Uh, something that anybody can get their hands on. Blade material? Uh, this is, I believe the blade material for this is going to be 9CR and then the auxiliary tool will be uh, like an 8CR. Okay. Yeah. yeah, perfectly reasonable. Very cool. Very cool indeed. And the last thing we have over at this table is just some new... We're going to uh, walk this way real quick. ...fixed blades. All right, we moseyed over here to the fixed blade corner for a couple new new knives here as well. So part of the Revo lineup is Revo Journey, which is more of our outdoor camping fixed blade series. So these are available this year. These, these were recently released, the RJ1. Mm -hmm. It's your kind of utility, multi-purpose fixed blade knife. It has the hammer tone finish. Yep. On and the, the flats. The orange is new, though, right? The orange is new. Yeah, yeah. That's a new. That's a new color. Yeah. Again, most highly uh, asked for, sought after color. Well, and especially on such an outdoors-oriented knife, it exactly. makes a lot of sense. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. And we went with a, you know, a high flat grind. I know a lot of bushcraft knives. They kind of have more of a, the spine, like a like a lower grind. But we went with like a yeah. traditional flat grind. It makes the knife a little bit more light. And I just think for everyday A little bit more general cutting, purpose, too. Exactly, yeah, a little bit yeah. more general purpose. We really made it to be an, uh, an everyday utility yeah. knife. No, the, the slicing characteristics of this blade has always been a high point for me. Because there, there is, there's just kind of nothing in the way. You're, yeah. You're going to come, exactly. come go through. And especially, again, like even reinforcing it with the orange handle, great hunting pattern yes. as well. You got all that belly and just a nice slice. Exactly, profile. very super high grind. Yeah, man. A lot of belly. And yeah, these man. are... Um, are currently available. Uh, they come with the Kydex sheath, with the with the clip in the, on the back that can be oriented horizontal or vertical. Yep. And we also sell it as a set where you get the little companion knife as a backup knife, and that sheath just stacks right on top of the original sheath. And coming towards the end of this year, if uh, this isn't big enough for you, <laughs> we have the RJ3, which is a more substantial, thicker, everyday outdoor knife. It's got a bigger handle for a little bit more more control. Mm -hmm. Definitely a more substantial knife. A lot of belly. I could see this being a great camp cooking knife. Yeah. Yeah, with that kind of drop to it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Plenty of handle on there, a too. A lot of handle, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. ergonomic. Even if you've got really big hands and you're wearing gloves. Or gloves, exactly. Still got plenty of length there. Very That's comfortable. Cool. It's it's very original looking. I, I I like that, but still, some things, like, you say look yeah. original, but they don't look useful. This looks useful. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it, kind it of is, like the whole... It's kind of a new, new vibe. ...design like philosophy behind Revo is give it kind of an edgier, more contemporary look. But don't lose the functionality. Yeah, yeah. And we did that with haven't. Journey as well. Yeah, you certainly have not lost the functionality here. Yeah, that's very cool. Kydex sheath, I'm assuming? Yes. Uh, 9CR? This is 9CR as well. And it can also function. This one in particular has the sheath for, for the RJ1 attached to it. So if you wanted both systems, you could, you could do that as well. Very cool. And if that's not big enough for you... <laughs> We have but the wait, RJ. There's more. Have, wait, there's a lot more. <laughs> uh, the RJ2. This is a, just a, a massive knife for really heavy duty outdoor work. Uh, it's also 9CR. It's got the, the hammer tone finish. And once you hold that, you can feel the weight is super, super substantial. Yeah, for sure. Nice thick blade there. We're about 3 sixteenths, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it's, 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 it's thick. And we had the option of thinning it out and making it a little bit lighter. But at the end of the day, we're like, look, go big or go home. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's a big knife. It's a heavy knife. I don't think people who buy a knife that big are looking for lightness. Mm -hmm. if, they, if you want light, you would go here, There's right? There's other options. So we said, just make it make it thick. Make it really overbuilt. And yeah, there's a little, there's enough of a kind of feel to it and the weight, you get a little bit of light chopping. Yep. Uh, not, not heavy chopping, obviously. But still, like but a, good, that a good slicing too. profile, yeah. too. Like, especially on a, on a drawback like so. Really big over, oversized jimping in the back. Yep. And 
oversized hardware. Pry tip there on the bottom, or? or yes. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a pry at the end too, as well, for yep. just a, a little more functionality. Very cool. And and these are, the, the prototypes come in this blue gray, but they'll come in the, the brown, the, the orange, standard colors, the black. Yeah. Cool. Very, very cool. I like it. You guys know I like a fixed blade, so of course I like these. <laughs> and should be available again by the end of uh, 2021. These are currently in, in production. Excellent. So Excellent. that sums up the, the journey line. Awesome. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Lawrence, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming by. Appreciate you showing me these things. Absolutely. Uh, as always, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to the Knife Center. We'll send you to the, uh, the BRS page and the Revo page. Keep your eyes peeled for this stuff, guys. It's quite nice. And as always, stick around for more Blade Show coverage.